Let us pray. Lord, we pray that you would open the hearts of each one of us and enable us now to hear and receive your word as you have intended it for each one of us individually. Amen. Moses was close to the end of his life. He had led the people of God out of slavery to the very edge of the promised land. For 40 years they had argued and disobeyed. They had worshipped idols as they slogged through the desert. Now their goal, the promised land, lay before them. But, Joe, but Moses had one final message. Choose life. There is a common theme in all four Bible readings this morning. And it's not one that we easily respond to. Each passage was written by a different author, in a different place, at a different time. But each demands our obedience to God. And we see that that obedience to God means choosing life. Last week, the sermon was on the well-known command for believers to act as salt and light in the world. Salt, to preserve a society crumbling under moral decay, and light, to illuminate the cause of the, that decay, and to drive out the darkness that is the result of it. We are all called to be salt and light, and during Lent, which begins in 10 days' time, we at St. Michael's will be finding the key to how we might become, or continue to be, salt and light and it all begins with submitting ourselves to God. In this morning's gospel reading we hear Jesus during his famous Sermon on the Mount in which he makes it clear that the law of Moses is still valid but he goes further he shows that we are required to keep the spirit of the law not just its letter. It is very challenging, us, challenging for us to understand that the condemnation of murder extends to us calling people fools or that adultery includes merely looking lustfully at someone. If read by us while we are spiritually immature, says Paul in his letter to the Corinthians, these commands appear absolutely impossible for us to obey. However, as I hope we shall see this morning, if we strive for spiritual maturity with a surer attitude of submission to God, the power of the Holy Spirit will enable us to become more like Christ. It might surprise you to learn that there is much in common between Corinth of 2,000 years ago and Johannesburg in 2023. In the first century, when Paul was writing the first of his letters to the church in Corinth, the city was prosperous, diverse, and riddled with paganism. Does this sound familiar? Corinth was and is a Greek coastal city. It fell under Roman colonial control in the year 146 BC and it became a major trading port. This led to its economic prosperity and it attracted a diverse group of people from foreign places. The population, when Paul established the church there, consisted of Greeks, Romans, and Jews. The major religious belief was the imperial Roman cult, which required absolute obedience to and worship of the emperor, Julius Caesar, at the time. So what is spiritual maturity? Spiritual maturity 
is the desire to become more like Jesus. As we agree to accept him as Lord and to follow him, a process of spiritual growth follows. According to Paul, it's an ongoing process that will never end in this life. In the Bible, he tells us that he himself has not yet obtained all this. But one thing I do, he says, forgetting what is behind and straining toward what is ahead, I press on toward the goal to win the prize for which God has called me heavenward in Christ Jesus. Like Paul, we have to press continually towards deeper knowledge and awareness of Christ. So spiritual maturity requires a radical change in our priorities, changing from pleasing ourselves to pleasing God and learning to obey God. The key to this maturity is perseverance in doing the things that will bring us closer to God. We do this by reading God's word in the Bible, by regular prayer, by fellowship with other Christians and services such as we have at St. Michael's, in service to other people and in stewardship. But however, no matter how hard we might work at these things, none of them is possible without the power of the Holy Spirit acting within us. So what then is obedience to God? Quoting from verse 36 of the Gospel reading this morning, Teacher, which is the greatest commandment in the law? Jesus replied, Love the Lord your God with all your heart and with all your soul and with all your mind. This is the first and greatest commandment, and the second is like it. Love your neighbor as yourself. How can we do this? How can we achieve this? Well, it requires firstly submission to God. And this is a daily process of submitting ourselves to God by placing him first in our lives, by committing every challenge, difficulty and fear that we have to him every day. Daily placing ourselves under the control of God and asking him to control our every thought, our every word and our every action. And we do it by prayer, constant prayer if we are able to do it. Prayer is speaking to God, but prayer is also listening to God. We grow also spiritually by having a spirit of generosity in all that we do and of humility, of not seeing ourselves better than others and of simplicity in the way we live our lives. So the message is choose life. In Deuteronomy chapter 30, the reading for today, we find one of scripture's most direct communications regarding the choices that we make and God's will for his people. We read, today I have given you the choice between life and death, between blessings and curses. Now I call on heaven and earth to witness the choice that you make. Oh, that you would choose life so that you and your descendants might live. You can make this choice by loving the Lord your God, by obeying him, and by committing yourself firmly to him. This is the key to your life. Unquote. In John 10.10 10, we read, The Lord gives his followers a rich and satisfying life. Our obedience to God brings life in all its fullness, as well as eternal life, as is promised again and again in the Bible. The call of Moses to choose life was not only about obeying rules, it's really a call to the heart. And a quote again, and now Israel, what does the Lord your God ask of you but to fear the Lord your God, to walk in obedience to him, to love him, to serve the Lord your God with all your heart and all your soul, unquote. So there lies the challenge for us this Easter and for the rest of our lives, to grow in spiritual maturity. And we do this by choosing life. And we choose life by choosing Christ and choosing to follow him and to ask him to live in us and for the Holy Spirit to empower us 
and enable us as we grow every day into spiritual maturity. Loving the Lord is the first step in choosing life. When we love the Lord, we desire to know him intimately. We hear his voice and we follow him. And then we can say, as Paul did, for me to live is Christ and to die is gain. Amen.